Hi, I'm Ivan from Webwash, and in this video, I will show you how to use taxonomy terms as options on web form elements in Drupal 8. Now, web form is great for creating survey style forms, and it offers a powerful interface for managing the form elements. So the little fields that appear on the form. Now, creating a select element, for example, is pretty straightforward. Just click on add, find a select element, define your options and you are done. But what if you want editors on your site to manage these options? Because right now these options are exported out as config and are tied on the actual form. Now a workaround for this is to use taxonomy terms as options. So in this video, I will show you how to use taxonomy terms as options in web form elements. So without further ado, Let's jump right in. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded and installed the Webform module. If you are new to Webform and want to learn about it, then check out our tutorials. Links are in the show notes below. Now, before we jump into things, let's go ahead and create a select element on a form. So go to structure, web forms. And what I'll do is I will create a select element on this contact form which is the default form that gets created when you install web form. So just click on build and then click on add element and then just filter by select and then click on add element on the select row. And I'll call this element software. And then if I scroll down here in the element options, I can define my actual options for the dropdown. So I'll enter in Drupal as one, uh, Joomla as a second, and WordPress as the third. And then I'll click on save, and then save elements. And then if I click on the test tab, which is a great tab for testing out forms because it loads up the form, but it also pre-populates the form. And then if we scroll down, here you can see our software select element with our options, okay? Now, if we go to build and then source, we can see the actual YAML version of the form. And then here you can see all of the elements. And then if we scroll down, we can see our software element as well as the options for that element. So here you can see that the options are essentially hard coded on the form. Now, what if you want this list of options to be manageable in Drupal? You can't just change these options without editing the form. If you want users on your site like editors to change the options, they need access to edit the form, which could be a problem depending on how you deploy configuration changes because form changes made in production could be wiped away the next time you deploy because you will need to import configuration changes. Now, you could work around this by ignoring web form config files using the config ignore module. So if you just Google Drupal config ignore, you'll see this config ignore module as well as this web form config ignore. Or you could use a taxonomy vocabulary to manage your options. This way, editors will only need to create a new taxonomy term to add a new option. So let me just close these tabs and let's recreate this software element using a taxonomy vocabulary. So let's go to structure and then taxonomy and then click on add vocabulary and I'll call this software, but you can call it whatever you want and then click on save. And then let's add in our terms. So again, I'll add in Drupal as one of them and I'll add in Gatsby, which I've been playing around with and, and it is pretty cool. And I will also put in WordPress and also Next.js, which I've also been playing around with and I'm pretty impressed with it. Okay, so if we edit our vocabulary and then list out all the options, you can see our taxonomy terms, okay? So our options are here. Now, if we go back to structure, 
web forms, and then click on build. And let's just delete this software element and then click on add element. And this time search for term and then add the term select element. And then if I add in the title for software and then from the vocabulary dropdown, make sure software is selected or your vocabulary and then just click on save and that's it. And then click on save elements. And now if we view the form, these options are coming from the software taxonomy vocabulary. So if an editor wants to add in a new option, all they need to do is create a new taxonomy term in the software vocabulary. And that also means that you as a site builder, you just have to give your editors access to the taxonomy system and you won't have to give them edit access to this form. Now, if we go back into build and then click on add element and if we scroll down to entity reference elements, you will see that there's the term select and also the term checkboxes as well as entity select, entity radios, entity checkboxes and entity autocomplete. Now, you can use any of these entity reference elements because taxonomy terms are entities. Now, what is the difference between term select and entity select? Well, term select only works with taxonomy terms, hence the name term select, whereas entity select allows you to reference any entity type. And you can also control things such as reference method and the sort. So if I was to add the entity select from the type of item to reference, I could select taxonomy term and then from vocabulary select software. And this is pretty much the same as if I was to select term select, but I do have these extra options such as being able to change the reference method as well as the sort. So the entity select gives you more flexibility than the term select. But if we were to just edit the term select, you will see that configuring the term select is much easier because all you need to do is just select your vocabulary and you're good to go. So it's really up to you which one you want to use. So there you have it. If you want to allow users to manage element options in a web form, then store the options using a taxonomy vocabulary. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about Drupal or you want to check out our other tutorials, then head over to webwash.net. That's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. All right, that's a wrap. Time to now edit all of this. First coffee, then edit. Whew, it's freezing.